The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello and welcome to Health for a Lifetime. Today we're going to be talking about exercise. Joining me is Dr. David DeRose. Welcome, Doctor. Good to be with you, Don. Now you work at the Lifestyle Center of America there in Oklahoma. Is that correct? That is correct. And is exercise a big part of the program there? Well, exercise is a huge part of the program as far as its importance. Uh, we don't have people exercising every minute of the day during lectures and during cooking classes, <laughs> okay. but, but exercise is critical to what happens there. Well, we see a lot of people out exercising or uh, it, it appears that way. We have trails, we have walking trails, bike trails, rollerblades, all kinds of different gadgets um, <laughs> and different things. Uh, hasn't the message of exercise gotten out there? Well, I mean, I think the message is out there. I mean, you can't avoid uh, learning about the benefits of exercise. I mean, the list just keeps growing and growing in, in medical research circles, whether you're talking about heart disease prevention, improving the immune system, uh, helping to fight depression, even pain control. But you know, Don, even though we see a lot of people exercising, the statistics indicate that only about 20% of Americans are on a regular exercise program. So 80% of us are not really moving around like we should. Is well, that right? at least not as a, as a discipline. Now, I, okay. I have to admit, there is a percentage of Americans who, in their jobs, uh, get a significant amount of exercise. Now, the minute I mention that, there's people saying, yeah, you know, I. Uh, I walk you know, here, walk on this. my job or do this or do that. But, but really, there's, it's a, a minority of people that get a sufficient amount of exercise on their job to really uh, make a difference. Well, if I'm not overweight and I seem to be eating the right foods, do I really even need to exercise? Well, a lot of people think that's where it begins and ends with how, how much you weigh. But there's some very interesting insights on, on this. I mean, the first one, Don, comes to me from the scriptures themselves. I mean, Adam and Eve were created perfect. Now, I don't know what kind of body uh, size that conjures up in people's minds, and I'm not going to uh, try to... Hazard a guess. Yeah, hazard a guess or force anyone's opinion. Yeah. But what the issue is, is in a perfect, sinless world, God gave Adam and Eve exercise. The mm -hmm. man's job, it says, was to dress and to keep the garden. And that's referring to humankind as I read it. Mm -hmm. So they're given this, this role in Eden. Before there was sin, before there was uh, weight problems and heart disease and, and cancer. So exercise seems to be, in God's model of creation, part and parcel of our being. And the Apostle Paul, even in his letters, indicates that exercise is beneficial. Profit. Well, of course, when they left Egypt, too, the people in that Old Testament story, you know, when they left Egypt, that big... Uh, a lot of people have seen that presentation on the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. and that big thing. They, God didn't just pull them out of there in some kind of... They had to walk. The physical activity. That's right. Well, um, you know, thinking a little bit more about exercise, a lot of people look at the Bible, though. We're talking about the doctor. You're a medical person. And they say, hey, wait a minute. This is a doctor. He deals with facts. But the Bible really is, is fictitious for them. Well, is there any medical science we can have to underpin these teachings of Scripture? I mean, the medical science is overwhelming, and, and we could go through a whole list of things from, from heart disease to cancer prevention. For example, colon cancer is one of the cancers that has emerged as being potentially preventable, or at least uh, we can decrease the risk of getting colon cancer with exercise. There's some research suggesting that women can decrease the risk of breast cancer by regular physical exercise. But then there's a whole host of other conditions, like mental health issues whether it's problems with anxiety or depression, a tendency to feeling just a bit down. Physical exercise is a mood stabilizer. If you're agitated, it tends to calm you. If you're depressed, it tends to lift you up. And so the National Institute of Mental Health has gone on record about the value of exercise. Another surprising one, Don, uh, coming out in the literature more recently in the medical research uh, area is arthritis. 
and exercise. Hmm. You know, we used to think as physicians that if someone's got arthritis, one of the best take things it easy. you can do, yeah, take it easy, you know, rest the joint. It's true, excessive exercise, mm -hmm. overindulgence in exercise can cause problems for arthritis. But actually what we're finding is regular physical exercise helps to decrease arthritic pain. You and I were just sitting today at the lunch table with a gentleman who was talking about his arthritic problems following the injury. Right. And uh, he started to exercise. He you felt remember? better. Yeah, at first it was hard, but then as he stuck with it, he felt better. Mm -hmm. And this is completely in keeping with the medical, uh, medical literature. Mm. So how much time do I need to spend to get the benefits of exercise? Well, you know, there's some good news and, uh, well, some not so good news about this. Let me tell you the good news first. Okay, good. I often run into people who say, Dr. DeRose, I don't exercise because I don't have time. You know, I've got a busy life. Uh, I can't go to the health club, get all sweated up, shower. But, Don, what the research is showing is that as little as three minutes of vigorous exercise measurably improves the immune system. Just three minutes. Three minutes. That now, is good news. That's very so that's good news. A, so that's all we need to do, three minutes a day. Well, we don't want to take that to too much of an extreme. The point I'm making okay. is any amount of exercise, as, as little as three minutes, can make a difference for you. So don't put it off. But when you look at the research talking about longevity, for example, mm -hmm. and it's incredible, most people don't realize the risk of death at any age can be decreased eightfold by regular physical exercise. Uh, the risk of death from heart disease can be decreased three and a half times by regular physical exercise. Wow. Now, how much exercise is that, though? It is more than three minutes a day. We're talking about in the range of 3,500 calories a week. Now, that's not something that probably uh, conjures up a real clear idea of exercise amount in most people's minds. Would you agree with that? Right. So how, how long do you have to exercise, say, to lose uh, 100 calories? Well, a good rule of thumb or is 100, 100. Yeah, burning 100 calories takes about a mile, whether you walk it, whether you jog it. Um, if you're on a bicycle, of course, you've got to do a bit more than that as far as you've got to go much more than a mile because you're getting 15 a minutes advantage. worth of walking then? Or? That's a good rule of thumb. 15 minutes of brisk walking burns about 100 calories. So that would be how many miles then for the... So it comes out, if you're going to burn 3,500 calories, you're talking in the range of a week having to go 35 miles. That's, I mean, it's a considerable amount of exercise, mm -hmm. five miles uh, a day. So is uh, more vigorous exercise, would it cut down the time you'd need to exercise? Well, it's true. When we look at calorie expenditure, and this is what some of the research looking at longevity, expanding the lifespan, uh, has looked at, and it's, it's the caloric... Uh, expenditure. So running a mile in eight minutes will give you just as many calories burned as walking a mile in 15. Oh, so you can actually reduce the time you need to exercise by exercising more vigorously. That's exactly right. But you, you need to know your health condition before you start that. I mean, no question about it. There are some people that really need to be careful before they start an exercise program. Uh, one, the classic group that really needs to see a doctor before they get real excited about a new exercise program is people with present signs of potential heart disease, mm -hmm. whether it's chest pain, whether it's shortness undue of breath. shortness of breath, whether they're having arm or jaw pain with activity. Okay. Those things can also be indicators of heart problems. So make sure and check with your physician or you know, someone before you do that. Yeah, but this is for the minority of people. You know, okay. I, I'm thinking of people who are, who are watching us today, Don, and they're right. saying, well, do I have to go see a doctor and get a prescription for exercise? Yeah, if you've got signs of heart disease, yes. If you've got a lot of risk factors, at least two main risk factors for heart disease. For example, you're a smoker and you've got high cholesterol, cholesterol above 240. Or you've got high blood pressure. Um, these kind of things, they should make you think twice before just diving into an exercise program. But, you know, I ask people a question all the time, Don. I, I say, did you need an exercise prescription to go to the mall today? <laughs> what do you think most of them tell me? Uh, well, if it's, if it's most ladies, I don't mean to pick on the ladies, they probably say absolutely not. Right. Well, here's the point. People can increase the amount they do of moderate exercise, most people, without a formal physician visit. Now, if you've got mm -hmm. risk factors going right. on, heart disease in the family, chest pain, yes, see a doctor. Mm -hmm. But for most people, they don't need a medical checkup before they start doing a little bit more. So then when they start out, they go uh, 30, 40 minutes a day? Actually, starting easy is the best rule of thumb. Three time. minutes, like you said. Well, 
Three minutes is a great start. <laughs> okay. Now, I'll tell you something interesting. Most people have been deterred from exercise because of misconceptions about exercise. And I continue to be amazed at the Lifestyle Center of America. People come to us, many of them, they hate exercise. They don't want to exercise. And their mind changes completely when they're exposed to some different ideas about exercise. One of the fellows that went through our program was a gentleman by the name of Ray Little Turtle. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray was very active in the past in the military, but he made uh, some changes in his lifestyle, became very sedentary, and then showed up at the Lifestyle Center of America. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a film clip today that, uh, that shares Ray's experience. Well, let, let's watch it. Ray. For 31 years in the military, I was very active, very regimented in my uh, exercise. Then I retired and became a couch potato and swore off of any kind of exercise. And I came here without any program of exercise other than lifting my hand from the food to my face and shutting and opening my eyes watching television, uh, being a little facetious. But that was about the, the essence of it, total lack of uh, any kind of regimen of exercise. And when I got here, I found what I'd learned in the military in 31 years, do it till you feel real bad and then do it a little bit more, had been completely wrong. Entryful exercise and training came into being. And I learned you do it by your heart rate and you do it up until you get the maximum out of it, then you go back down and keep repetitiously doing that and it was more beneficial. So what I hear him saying is that we don't have to do everything all at once. It's uh, once in a while or throughout the day once in a while. That's right. There's a whole body of research now, Don, looking at lifestyle activities. Mm -hmm. It's incorporating more physical activity so that we accumulate uh, 30 minutes or more uh, every day, preferably every day, but at least most days of the week. This is what a lot of the, the major... Uh, uh, research groups are saying. So and it's not all at once. That's so right. It doesn't have to be all at once. But the total needs to measure up, if you're exercising at home, to 30 to 45 minutes a day. Th that's a good rule of thumb. That, that's an ideal. But remember, Start even out with less three. exercise okay. is moving you in the right direction. The other concept that uh, Ray was exposed to that you heard him talking about was this concept of intermittent training. Intermittent training. And uh, our exercise physiologist, Harold Meyer, mm -hmm. has done some exciting work. We've collaborated together. We've presented some exciting research at scientific meetings. And uh, he's going to share with our viewers right now some uh, insights into just uh, the approach we're taking there at the Lifestyle Center. Let's join Harold. Um, there are many myths about exercise. One of those myths uh, are that you have to actually have pain to actually make gain. You've heard no pain, no gain. That's a myth that's actually used quite a bit. Um, we've found here that exercise in small doses, um, they can make just as much progress. And in fact, mastering their diabetes is very important in controlling the amount of activity and dosing the amount of activity they get. So while they're here, um, we teach them the method of intermittent training which is where they exercise and then they rest, exercise, rest. Now we're talking about very short doses of activity. We're talking about for each minute of exercise, they get some fraction of rest. Now that rest may be dependent upon what condition they actually are. So if a person uh, exercises for 30 seconds, rests for 30 seconds, in, in reality they're exercising for half the time. But we found that they make just as much progress if they were exercising continuously because rest is very important for uh, developing and stimulating that cardiovascular system. That sounds like cutting edge stuff. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, this is getting attention in some of the major medical meetings we've presented at the American College of Sports Medicine, at the uh, North American Association for the Study of Obesity. So this is, this is cutting edge stuff that we're doing. Dosage of exercise. Dosage of exercise. And yet the interesting thing is, we're really hearkening back to an older way of exercising. Mm -hmm. And that was when people would work in their gardens. You think they were out there, you know, checking their pulse and trying to keep in their target range uh, for an hour? Never or remember half my an hour. mom doing that. No. <laughs> well, what do people do when they exercise in a natural environment? They do what needs to be done. They do what needs to be done. When they start getting a little fatigued, they rest. Mm -hmm. We're finding this exercise is actually more beneficial. 
Uh, someone told me once in about 1900, 1911, people would walk about 11 miles a day, <laughs> average. <laughs> it's a lot of walking. <laughs> We've been talking to Dr. David DeRose. We've been talking about exercise. You can start out with a little and build up and work within your normal schedule. We're going to learn more about exercise, more about intermittent training, and join us when we come back from the break. Have you found yourself wishing that you could shed a few pounds? Have you been on a diet for most of your life, but not found anything that will really keep the weight off? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then we have a solution for you that works. Dr. Hans Deal and Dr. Eileen Luddington have written a marvelous booklet called Reversing Obesity Naturally, and we'd like to send it to you free of charge. Here's a medically sound approach successfully used by thousands who are able to eat more and lose weight permanently without feeling guilty or hungry through lifestyle medicine. Dr. Deal and Dr. Luddington have been featured on 3ABM, and in this booklet, they present a sensible approach to eating, nutrition, and lifestyle changes that can help you prevent heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. Call or write today for your free copy of Reversing Obesity Naturally, and you could be on your way to a healthier, happier you. It's absolutely free of charge, so call or write today. Welcome back. We've been talking with Dr. David DeRose. We've been talking about exercise. And doctor, you've said that just a little bit of exercise can really have big benefits and then we need to grow and build as, uh, well, as what we need to do or what we need to do because we're sick. The issue is, Don, you know, many people put up a bunch of barriers uh, as far as exercising. You know, they say, I don't have time, I don't enjoy exercise, I mean, it's too hard, uh, I don't have a fitness club nearby. And the, the message we're trying to get across to people is there are things accessible that they can do, most everyone can do some type of exercise. This is the message we're trying to give people. And this intermittent training, I believe, is really critical because it's opening up the windows for many people to say, look, I can do that. I mean, I can exercise for, for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and then rest for 30 seconds. So those that just join us might not know what intermittent training is. Describe what it is. And then I think you have another clip of, of Harold there from the Lifestyle Center of America that's going to show us a little bit more. Well, what is it, first off? Basically, intermittent training is interspersing periods of exercise with what we call active rest. Okay. So in other words, you may uh, get on a treadmill if you were exercising in a very confined environment. Let's say, let's say you can't get outside. Let's say it's a uh, thunder and lightning storm. And so you get on the treadmill, uh, you're on there for 30 seconds exercising, and then you slow the speed way down and you just do almost like what you think of as a cool down for 30 seconds. You know, okay. we, and, and so you do this intermittent uh, exercise and rest. You know, it's interesting to me that if you look at God's plan for our health, it often is interspersing periods of activity with periods of rest mm. on a daily basis, taking time to come apart with God and rest and fellowship with Him and then going out in service. On a weekly Giving basis. It all you got. Yeah, on a weekly yeah. basis. The Sabbath, mm -hmm. a period of rest in the midst of a week of activity. Mm -hmm. And so it is with exercise. We're finding that in the research literature and in research we're doing at the Lifestyle Center of America that this concept of intermittent training makes a big difference. So Harold's going to share a little bit more about that with us right now. Yeah, I think people need to hear this okay. uh, more than once. Let's uh, join Harold again. Um, just like any other field, we have a lot of myths that uh, are accompanying uh, exercise. And those myths teach us um, that we don't like exercise. People get into this uh, you know, attitude that exercise has to hurt to actually make improvement. No pain, no gain, you've heard that, uh, um, that myth. Well, it's not true. You can exercise and you can rest, exercise and rest, mix it all together and actually make just as much improvement. We use a technique here called intermittent training. And what that is, is where you'll rest some fraction of time during each minute of exercise. And uh, the average turns into be about 30 seconds of exercise with 30 seconds of rest. Interesting enough, we actually saw more weight uh, loss, more percent fat loss in the study that we conducted here at the, at the uh, Lifestyle Center of America. But we also saw um, just as much improvement in their cardiovascular fitness. And uh, that was a unique find. Uh, in the scientific world, you think, that if you don't push farther, harder, longer, that you're not going to get the progress that you normally would get. But with resting, 
we find that that stimulates the system and allows it to pay back debt that your system would get into and make much more progress. That's just fascinating, the fact that we rest and it stimulates rejuvenation. Yes, it's, it's amazing because in the study that we did, we had people exercising the same amount of time. We started with 20-minute sessions. These were all sedentary people from the community. They were mm -hmm. not exercising. And we started them with 20-minute exercise sessions. The group that was doing the conventional aerobic exercise, they would exercise continuously for those 20 minutes. But the interval training group was exercising, resting, exercising, resting, roughly about 30 seconds of exercise than 30 seconds of rest. Mm -hmm. And so they're really, if you think about it, they're only exercising half the time. Mm -hmm. Even though the exercise session is 20 minutes, uh, it's not uh, 20 minutes of constant exercise. So it's not a long period of rest, but it's enough to catch your breath. It's the kind of thing that you do, a lot of people probably do right out on their walks already. If, if you're listening to your body, that's what you're doing when you do useful work. Mm -hmm. That's really what happens. And, <laughs> and the reason why it seems to be beneficial, at least the theory is, is that you're more efficiently using oxygen. That's Instead right. of pushing your system and building up the waste products, like lactic acid, mm -hmm. which can contribute to muscle soreness, you get rid of that lactic acid and you're more efficiently burning fat. This is what we saw. Okay. After 10 weeks on this kind of program, the people doing the intermittent training had lost more weight and they lost more body fat than those who were exercising continuously. So when I'm going down the road, I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest with you, Doctor. Okay. Here I am out exercising and every year I start this exercise program again and again. Uh -huh. And uh, I, with the Lord's blessing, I'm in an exercise program now and it's, it's going well. But I'll tell you, um, before I started to hear some of these concepts that you, you've shared, um, I would be going down a road and I'd think, oh no, there's these cars coming, I gotta act like I'm really exercising and I'm really, you know, uh -huh. and then, you know, now this is just saying, hey, go 30 seconds and if you can't do it more, back and forth, and now you, you begin to build up and you can go longer, That's is that right? right? It, it's listening to your body. What happens is you see people get more fit in our research and in our program at the Lifestyle Center of America. What happens is they can exercise more, maybe 40 seconds and then take a 20 second rest, maybe 50 seconds and take a 10 second rest. This isn't just for sedentary people though, Don. We had a woman, a marathon runner, mm -hmm. came to our center and uh, she heard about this interval training concept. Uh, Harold, uh, our exercise physiologist, worked with her and she started doing the interval training method. A very fit woman. Okay. She was able to turn back her marathon times like 10 years. I think she was in her 50s and at the end of this interval training uh, routine that she did for a number of months, she was running as fast as she was when she was 10 years younger. Is that right? Yeah, so I mean, this, this is something for that can make a difference for athletes as well as for sedentary people. The high-powered athletes, if they start doing this, having a Sabbath rest <laughs> <laughs> in their exercise program, it, it, it'll It's powerful. The, the other interesting thing that we looked at, and this is what we presented at the uh, North American Association for the Study of Obesity. This is one of the largest uh, obesity research groups in the world, and uh, it draws people from all over the world. It's, a, it's one of the most stimulating conferences I've been to. We were there in California in uh, uh, the fall of 2000, presenting our, our research data. And one of the interesting things we showed, Don, was that with the intermittent training, thyroid function improved more than we see with the continuous exercise. So what do you mean thyroid function? What is a thyroid? What does it do? Okay, the thyroid is this master gland. It's at the kind of the base of the neck. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thyroid sends out hormones that controls our metabolism. The okay. main one is something called thyroxin. Mm -hmm. And these metabolic hormones determine how fast our body works. It's also involved, thyroid hormone, in burning fat. Okay. And so, so our, the connection. That's right. Our theory is that because the thyroid is functioning better, you lose more. It's helping people to lose more weight, and it's by doing less work. Do we have any people that maybe you've talked to, just a regular type person, that have seen this work for them? I see regular type people all the time, Don, at the Lifestyle Center of America. One woman comes to mind because we're talking about thyroid. She had both weight problems as well as some mild thyroid problems. And uh, the way we assess thyroid function is by doing a blood test of uh, a hormone made by the pituitary called thyroid-stimulating hormone. Okay. Now, it's easy to point to the thyroid. It's here at the base of your neck. 
but the pituitary, I mean, you, you can't point at him. It's, it's deep. In you know, the middle in, of your head. Yeah, in the middle of your head at the base of your brain. Okay. And it sends messages to the thyroid telling it to work. If the thyroid is sluggish, your pituitary is pumping out more TSH. So her TSH level was elevated. Okay. And many times someone like this would be put on thyroid hormone replacement. Mm -hmm. But after we'd done this research, I said, look, we're finding that this interval training stimulates yeah, that. stimulates the thyroid. Let's not start on any thyroid medication, and let's see what happens to your thyroid function after two weeks on this program. And lo and behold, she lost weight, and her TSH level came down to normal. So dosage of exercise that's reversing medical problems. Definitely. It, 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 it's doing some exciting things. And, you know, it's intermittent activity throughout the day, Don, that can make a difference, like we talked about earlier, as well as intermittent intensity of exercise during an exercise session. There's now research out that indicates you can improve that heart-healthy HDL more by spreading out your exercise several sessions throughout the day. Maybe five, ten minutes, several mm -hmm. times throughout the day may do more for the good cholesterol than exercising continuously in one lump of time. Diabetics? Oh, for diabetes, tremendous progress when it comes to exercise. Both strength training like lifting weights as well as aerobic exercise can make a big difference. We see dramatic improvements in our program at the Lifestyle Center of America. We've got a minute and a half left, Doctor. Let's just review. Maybe someone's just joining the program now. At the Lifestyle Center of America, then what, what do you say to people? They come, they're maybe obese, they've got some problems, and they haven't exercised for years. What do you say to them? What do they do? Well, we tell them one thing there, and I'll tell them a, the same thing, basically, as they're tuning into us today. And that's this. You don't have to knock yourself out on an exercise program. You don't have to follow a program that you can't follow for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You see? Don't, don't try and just overdo it. That's right. Exercise has benefits as little as a few minutes of exercise can measurably improve physical things like the immune system. Three minutes then. Three minutes. But as you increase exercise, you get additional benefits as far as lowering blood pressure, decreasing cancer risk, helping to prevent diabetes, the research shows, mm -hmm. as well as helping to treat it. So you get up, you, get, you go from three, and, and what do you want to shoot towards uh, ultimately? If we were saying an ideal, yes. we'd be shooting an optimal would be 3,500 calories a week, which comes out to about 35 miles if you're walking or jogging. That's quite a bit. That's not to be a hurdle that discourages people, mm -hmm. but to say to set a goal high, and if you can continue on that path, you're going in the right direction. We've been talking with Dr. David DeRose from the Lifestyle Center of America. We have good news about exercise. A little bit is really good for you. More, as you can handle it, is better. And the Lord will give you wisdom to know where you should be, what you should be doing. We hope today's program will give you health that lasts for a lifetime.